when we talk about the response rate in those who've received BTK inhibitors, it's important to know that that's part of the eligibility for the trial. So uh, by definition, all of the patients really should have come on having received uh, a BTK and either been proven intolerant or, uh, uh, or, or relapsed or refractory after the BTK. Now, the overwhelming majority were relapsed or refractory. There were a few that came on that were intolerant. The data are now published in the New England Journal of Medicine. And, you know, one of the things that uh, we can see from the subgroup analyses uh, is the response according to uh, ibrutinib intolerance, according to um, you know, being relapsed refractory to, to abrutinib. Uh, and, and there was a third cohort that I was a little surprised by, which is, um, you know, not previously exposed to a BTK, meaning that uh, they had some contraindication to, to receiving the, the BTK inhibitor. Uh, and, I, and I don't know um, very much about this particular subset. The patients we enrolled um, had seen a prior BTK before they came on. Um, when we look at that particular subgroup, um, it is true that uh, when you, when you look at the confidence band, confidence intervals is very, very wide and, and, and it sort of, you know, begs the question, well, could this um, be a group that doesn't benefit as much from, from CAR T-cell therapy? And the answer is we have no idea. I mean, there were so few patients who fell into this category. Um, you, know, uh, you know, one additional patient who, who does well and responds well would shift it all the way back over, you know, to the right in favor of CAR T-cell therapy. So I'm, I'm not really sure that I can say much about how important um, prior BTK uh, is to the response um, of CAR T. When we think about it, you know, taking a step back, um, you know, in in what lymphoma and what setting do we need to? Would we argue that the response of an immunotherapy is somehow dependent on prior exposure to a, to a prior drug? Remember, when we talk about um, the the process for CAR T. Uh, you know, patients have to stop the abrutinib to undergo the leukophoresis, which is where we collect those T cells for manufacturing, and then they um, can uh, resume the BTK briefly during that period of manufacturing, but it's only about two weeks. It's not very long. Um, and then they have to stop it again before um, starting the fudarabine and cyclophosphamide um, lymphodepleting chemotherapy. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's really hard for me to believe that abrutinib, uh, you know, going way back now, roughly a month before the CAR T cell infusion, is somehow impacting what the CAR T cells are doing. Now, one possibility, which I think um, remains, um, you know, it, it's a very interesting question is, you know, could the abrutinib exposure prior to the leukophoresis have somehow biased the T cells in one way, shape, form, or another, um, making for a more active product? It's a great question. Uh, I, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure I can answer that. You know, people um, have speculated that while ibrutinib does inhibit um, ITK as well as as BTK, that um, you know, paradoxically, they may strengthen um, you know TCR signaling um, in um, in those T cells, um, allowing for sort of uh, more selective binding uh, and, and, a, and, a, and a better response once you have that more selective binding. This is all, again, um, you know, a way of me saying, I don't think we really, we really know or understand, right? When we talk about CAR T cells, CAR T cells um, aren't really acting through their TCR, right? They're acting through the CAR. Um, we can speculate that, you know, maybe there's a second wave of T cells that that are um, driven to proliferate and, and driven to activation following that initial CAR T cell mediated killing of, of, of the lymphoma. This is data that has come out of um, the Harvard Group, Scott Rodix Group, and, and and others have shown that um, you know after um, yes, CARTA specifically that they they you know by day ten they could see that the lymph nodes were were actually occupied by a very high proportion of non CAR T um, transfected T cells. So, you know, again, the, the conceptually, this would be like saying, are the CAR T's acting like minerals in this context? Um, and, and somehow driving um, native um, T cells uh, to, to see and, and, and kill mantle cell lymphoma. And here now the TCR may be more important. Um, you know, again, uh, these are more likely to be T cells that come with the product, meaning non-transfected T cells, since we're giving that lymphodepletion before the CAR T. Uh, and we're talking about doing these biopsies really at around, at around day 10. Uh, I say more likely, I don't think we know. Um, and so, uh, you know, with, with all of this background, it's a simple way of saying, is it 
possible that a brutinib somehow drives a better therapeutic response or prior brutinib drives a better, ther uh, better therapeutic response? The answer is maybe, but it's really, really gonna be hard to, to tease that out. And I think ultimately, um, until we do trials that very specifically test that, you know, this, this, this is kind of where we're gonna have to leave it.